Welcome to this processing tutorial. In this first tutorial, we're going to cover how to create a window, how to color the background of a window, and how to change the size of the window. All right, so the two basic parts of a sketch are the methods set up and draw. So to start a, a function, sometimes called a method, we're going to type in void and then set up. And notice that the word changes color. This means that it's a keyword or a reserved word for processing, and you cannot use it to name one of your variables, which we'll talk about variables in another video. After the word setup, we're going to use an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. And then after the closed parenthesis, we're going to do an open curly brace, hit the enter sign, and do a closed curly brace. Curly braces can be found next to the P on your keyboard. The second required method of a processing sketch is the draw method. So let's type that method in. So we're going to type in boy draw open parentheses and close parentheses, and then an open curly brace, hit enter, and a close curly brace. Notice that when we are missing the pair of a curly brace, in the console window it tells us that we have an error, that we're missing a matching curly brace. So the console window can be very helpful in letting you know where some of your mistakes are and what they might be. So let's go ahead and put that curly brace back in. Okay, so now we want to be able to draw a window. So we're going to use the method size. So we type in the word size, open parentheses, and then close parentheses. We then want to back up so that we can type inside the parentheses. And we're going to make our window 600 pixels wide by 450 pixels high. And then to end this statement, we need a semicolon. Each statement in processing needs to end with a semicolon. If I delete the semicolon, notice that it gives me a red underline and suggests that I'm missing a semicolon and should end the statement by adding a semicolon. So let's put that semicolon back in. Now if we want to run our sketch to see what our code produces, we can hit the Run button. So go ahead and do that. And you get a window that is 600 wide by 450 high. Notice at the top of the window we have the name of the file, and right now it's sketch 170903b. We can change that sketch name by saving it. In order to save a file, we can go up to Processing and hit, sorry, go up to File and hit Save As from the menu. Once we have the save window up, we can change the name of the sketch to, I'm going to just do my first sketch. And then I can choose where I'm going to save that file. I'm going to save that file to my desktop for right now. And then I'm going to hit Save. Now you can see at the top of the window it says My First Sketch. If we run the sketch again, at the top of our window it says My First Sketch. So let's go ahead and close that off. Now let's say we want to give our window a white background. So we type in background, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then inside the parentheses we're going to type in 255, and we're going to end with the semicolon. This number inside these parentheses is called a parameter. In this case, the value is 255. This parameter happens to be the color of the background. In this case, 250 stands for white, and 0 will stand for black. Let's go ahead and run it by clicking the arrow. I'm going to click the arrow. We can see that a white colored background has been added. 
we close the sketch off and we type in zero and run our sketch again, you can see that a black background has been added. Any, this is an 8-bit number because it runs from 0 to 255. Um, if we use a number in between 0 and 255, we're going to produce a shade of gray. So let's go ahead and run that. And we can see that we have a gray background. To get a color background, we use hexadecimal numbers, and those types of numbers will be addressed in another video. However, if you want to look up online what a hexadecimal number might be for a specific color, um, you can do that by yourself. All right, so let's just leave our background as white, so let's type in 255. Next, in the draw method, we are going to um, draw a simple line. All right, a line consists of two points, therefore an X and Y for the starting point and an X and Y for the ending point. So we're going to type in the method line, and then we're going to type in open parentheses. We'll start our first point of the line at 45 for the X and 25 for the Y, and we'll end our line at 200 and 78 for the Y. We'll close the parentheses, and then since this is the end of the statement, we will end in the semicolon. So let's go ahead and run our program again and choose the run button. And you can see a line has been drawn from those two points, from in between those two points. Okay, let's close off that sketch. Let's say we wanted to um, change the width of that line. We can add stroke. weight and type in a 4. Notice that stroke weight changes color, so it's a reserved keyword. We use open and close parentheses, and inside of those parentheses we use the number 4 as the value for our parameter. 4 is basically 4 pixels based on the resolution of your screen. We also need to end in a semicolon to finish our statement. So we can go ahead and run that code. It's best to test each bit of code so that you can more easily find your mistakes if the code doesn't run. And notice that when we run this, the line has become thicker. All right. Another basic method or function that we can use for a line is color. In order to change the color of the line, I need to set up a variable. I'm going to say, call this variable C1, and I'm going to set it equal to the value. Now since this is a color, I need to call color. So I'm going to type in the word color before the name of the variable. After the equal sign, I'm going to type in a quote. quotes. Well, actually, let's do hexadecimal. So I'll type in a pound sign, and then I'm going to type in hexadecimal value for a color. Most hexadecimal values are six, num six letters or numbers. I need to end in a semicolon. Okay, the hexadecimal numbers also need to be in quotes, so I need to add a quote at the beginning and a quote at the end. And we can actually 
That is incorrect. My mistake. You do not need the quotes. Um, the error is saying that the value has not been used yet. So it, because it's orange, it's giving us a warning. So now instead of, now we need to use it. So instead of stroke weight, we're going to call stroke. And we're going to pass in the variable name C1. And end with a semicolon. So what's happening here is we're coloring the line, then we're telling how wide the line is, and then finally we draw the line. Anything that you do before a statement relates to that statement. So these three parameters or variables or attributes relate to this one object, the line. All right, so let's run this. And we can see we get a thick line, and that's colored using the hexadecimal number that we used. You can find a list of the numbers for every color um, on the internet if you just Google hexadecimal numbers. Okay, in the next video, we will work with some other shapes. See you next time.